Hello everyone and welcome back to Football Manager 2022 and a new experiment today where we're going to take a look at what would happen if you had the perfect team in Football Manager and the team that we're going to use for this experiment is Farsley Celtic. What we're going to do is give them 11 perfect players and then see what happens to them through time and how high they can take Farsley up the world pyramid of football, hopefully get some Champions League titles along the way, all the way from non-league and hopefully do that quite quickly as well. You can see what I've done with each of the players is made them Gibraltarian so that hopefully Gibraltar will also get a little rise up from one of the worst teams in international football to one of the best. Um, and with each of the players, I've arranged a future transfer to Real Madrid. So in 20 years time, they will eventually leave the club and go and play for Real Madrid for a little bit. You can see the stats here are all perfect. I've made them all 15. And for almost all of them, I've deleted their career history, all using the pre-game editor. There are videos on my channel about how to use the uh, full FM editor if you're interested in trying to do something like this for yourself. Um, now, this will probably be another one-parter. I'm quite enjoying doing the one-parts and getting through things quite quickly. Let me know your thoughts on that approach down in the comments if you prefer two, three-part uh, experiments but I think it's nice sometimes just to run through them quickly so what I will do today is go forward probably maybe seven years to begin with because in theory they should be in the Premier League by that point and then we'll probably just jump straight to the end of their career and see how they've got on so let's go forward now six seven years in time and see if Farsley have managed to make it up into the Premier League well we're a few years forward now they are up into the Premier League and you can see their time started off very well. Mark Bett, who I think is a striker here for them, uh, getting a hat-trick in the first game as they win 5-0 in the Vanarama National League North. They do, interestingly, lose a game 2-1. I'm not quite sure what's happened there. You can't see um, whether they had the full team, but this guy is not one of my Gibraltarian wonder kids, so I imagine that uh, some of those players were not available. Maybe they had an international match for Gibraltar, actually. That, that might make sense, but it seems quite early for that call-up to Gibraltar. If that's the case, we will check on how Gibraltar are getting on in a little minute. But you can see other than that, uh, it's quite the record. I don't think they've conceded a goal with the Gibraltar players all the way up until they play Lincoln in the FA Cup, um, winning every game by four or five goals without conceding. Um, FA Cup, they beat Wigan 3-1 away from home. That's a good result. Birmingham 4-0. Uh, they do draw with Southampton, which is interesting. They had a man sent off there. You'd expect them to beat Southampton, which they do then during the replay 4-0. They beat Spurs 3-2 as well. Embarrassing for Spurs there. It looks like they may well have played a weakened team. Blackpool in the quarterfinals, an interesting one. That would have been a great quarterfinal. Um, and then in the FA Cup semi-final, they beat Wolves 3-0 in that one to put themselves into the FA Cup final and they are the I'm sure the first team ever in history to win both the FA Cup final which they do on penalties against Manchester United United looked like they'd won it uh, after Oli Bro missed but Danny van der Beek missed Richard scored uh, and then Scott McTominay missed now it looks like that's a uh, it's because of these scored here um, so yeah, they end up beating Man United at Wembley in front of 90,000 fans. What a way to announce yourselves as the best team in the world. And then they follow that up one week later with an FA Trophy win back at Wembley. A bit of a smaller crowd for that one, just 20,000 uh, in the stadium. So 70,000 must have been United fans at this Wembley match. But they are the FA Cup winners and that means that while well, down in the Vanarama National League, they are also in the Europa League, uh, which is a pretty good place to be. Uh, you can see the National League not putting up much resistance, Dartford getting one goal, and their European debut, while still not technically a Football League team, ends in a one-all draw with Victoria Pleasant, but they do end up winning their next few games, uh, Dinamo and Nos Moscow, uh, fun trip to Moscow for the non-league boys, um, FA Trophy going well, I mean, these scores are ridiculous at this point, um, but you can see they do lose 3-1 to Monaco in extra time. Um, and get eliminated in the second round of the Europa League, um, which is interesting. Europa League second knockout round was a one-legged tie. That is interesting. I don't know what that's about. They had to play at Elland Road as well, uh, being a Yorkshire club, not able to play at their own stadium for that one. They also lose in the quarterfinals of the FA Cup to Chelsea, so not as successful a season this time round. They do get another FA trophy. Um, but yeah, nowhere near as good. It does allow them to focus on their League 2 campaign, uh, which gets off 
pretty well. Uh, a defeat again in the FA Cup, this time to Derby. Three days after they beat Manchester City in the Carabao Cup final. So they do have another trophy in the cabinet there. They also wrap up the Papa John's trophy as they make it up into League One. Back in the uh, in European football, but the Europa Conference League this time. Um, another defeat here. I, I mean, it must be something to do with Gibraltar. Uh, but Man City do knock them out of the Carabao Cup, so they're struggling to retain competitions. That's what I'm picking up from this. Uh, do they even make it out of their Europa League group? I think they do, yeah. It's just a long break before the European football comes back. Transponsor being beaten 5-0 by Arsenal in the FA Cup, uh, and then they lose two more games in a row. I mean, that's got to be an international break, which just seems weird that they're throwing in international breaks and not taking the... Uh, rescheduled fixtures for those games but absolutely smashed there they do beat Stuttgart to get through to the semis they beat Limassol and then they beat Bayern Leverkusen 3-0 in the Europa Conference League final at Celtic Park to win their first European silverware and it means that they're back in the Europa League as well uh, as they return to the championship and they do reasonably well in the Europa League they do eventually beat Borussia Dortmund 2-1 as well Carabao Cup they make it into the final uh, and beat Leicester 2-0 to so their second Carabao Cup. Uh, semi-finals against Lille, 4-0 win there, followed up by a 2 all draw. And they do win the Europa League. So they've got the Conference League and the Europa League now. Uh, but they lose the FA Cup final to Arsenal. Arsenal seem to know how to beat them. And suddenly, we are into the Premier League. They win the European Super Cup 4-1, uh, which is pretty nice. Another European trophy in the cabinet. They have a draw here with... Um, Cardiff. Interestingly, they've signed Luka Jovic up front. They've actually got an interesting team here. It's not all uh, the Gibraltarian players. They've got Sagadu in there. Um, they've really changed up their players a little bit. The Europa League three, uh, Champions League debut is a 3-0 win away from home at the San Siro against AC Milan. Pretty good result there. They beat United 3-1. I'm just a little bit distracted by the fact that they're not actually playing all of their best players in every game. And maybe that explains why they're losing games 3-2. Why is, why is Chesney in goal? I don't really understand what's going on here. They're, they're sort of swapping out their key players for people like Daley Blint, uh, which I don't get. And suddenly their form's trailing off. I, I, it's a really strange decision to make. Uh, you can see Carabao Cup. Uh, they do actually get beaten by Everton as well. So the Premier League, not a... Not given at this point. They do make it to the Champions League semi-finals uh, after beating Barcelona 3-0 in aggregate, but then knocked out by Man City. They do win another FA Cup against City, a little bit of revenge there, um, but generally don't seem to have done too well in the Premier League. Let's have a look if they do manage to win this title. They don't. They finish second, two points behind Man City, so no Premier League title for them yet. Uh, and what I'm interested in is why they aren't playing their best team. Uh, you can see they've still got all these Gibraltarian players here. If we look at maybe some of these players, see how they got on. Uh, I think Mark Bett has played quite a lot. He played 31, got 21 goals there. You can see his record across the other games as well. Um, some of the other players, Luke Parkin, he's another striker. 28 games. I don't think he had an injury at any point. A mm, couple of injuries in there, twisted knee, various other things going on. Uh, who else do we have? Luke Parkin, another striker, uh, 28 games. Uh, we also have Chris Atkinson here. Yeah, 36. I mean, they were playing in these games, not necessarily all of them. 28, so missing about 10 games on average, some of these players. 30 for Tom Allen. Um, so, yeah, just a, just a bit of an interesting one, really, that they're not playing their best players every single time. Centre back here. He only played nine times. What's that about? Tight groin. I mean, three days, six days, two weeks. He's not been out. Uh, I mean, pulled ligaments. Uh, sports hernia five weeks. But that's back in 2025. There's no rhyme or reason as to why these players aren't getting a full run in the team. So I'm interested to see how that progresses going forward. But it means if we look at their competition records so far, they've got a lot of trophies. Don't get me wrong, but Two Carabao Cups, one Conference League, two FA Cups, Super Cup, Europa League, and a Premier League runners-up medal. Uh, they're not quite there yet. There's a way to go. So what we're going to do now, they've still got their original manager 
Adam Lakeland in charge. We're going to go forward uh, to the end of this experiment. I realise I haven't looked at Gibraltar yet, but it might be easier to run through that all in one go, because if they've already won everything by now, it doesn't matter too much. So let's go forward now, see if Farsi managed to eventually win that Premier League, maybe even a Champions League title, and then we'll see how they get on with Gibraltar. So we are now 21 years into the future from where we started, so 2042, all the players have now moved on from Farsley and they've had one full season at Real Madrid. Um, and we're gonna very quickly just run through, you can see First Community Shield here, just each of these seasons, see what they managed to pick up. You can see Carabao Cup is in there, but beaten in the Champions League by Bayern Munich, another FA Cup against Man City. Uh, Champions League again, uh, beaten by Milan, so they're not making it through. And look at their Premier League form, that's abysmal. So many defeats in there. They do win another FA Cup, but it looks like they're just not playing their best players. Mark Bet is getting games, but Divock Origi up front, and they've got three perfect strikers. I don't understand Luka Jovic getting games as well. Romagnoli in there. I mean, they're good players, but they're not perfect players, and I don't know why they're not playing their perfect players. A little run here as they win another Carabao Cup, but they're in the Europa League and losing to teams like Sevilla. Um, another FA Cup against Chelsea. The thing with the FA Cup is it doesn't have squad registration. So I wonder if this is a squad registration issue where they may be signing too many players. And because these perfect players have transfers arranged for the future, they're just deciding not to register them because they're leaving the club. I mean, that's the only answer I can think of. I mean, look, they're back in the Conference League now. And they're losing in the Conference League to Atalanta. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Back in the Champions League, Carabao Cup, a better winning run this time. Um, and you can see they, they lose again in the Europa League. They do get an FA Cup in there. Um, but it's just surprising. Um, they do get another Carabao Cup. They get another FA Cup, but lose to Spurs in the Europa League semi-final. Not even the Champions League when they're making these runs. Another Carabao Cup, another FA Cup, Champions League quarterfinals beaten by City. Uh, we will look at their Premier League history as well. This is a bit of a better run here. Another Carabao Cup, another FA Cup final, but not able to get through in the quarterfinals. Again, beaten by Man City. Um, I mean, it's really this Champions League that we're looking at. Uh, Spurs in the quarterfinals of the Europa League. It looks like they're just not playing their best players. Uh, hopefully one of you guys knows why this is occurring. My theory is that it's because they're, they're not registering them, but you can see they do beat City finally. They're bogeymen in Europe. They managed to get a 4-1 win. And then in the final, unfortunately, they do lose to Chelsea 2-1. That late penalty, not enough in Wales. They follow it up with a win uh, against Newcastle, but even in this FA Cup final, they're not playing their best players. And that doesn't have squad registration in it. Um, you can see they are actually playing them because they're still popping up on the score sheet. Mark Betts still there. Um, Luke Parkin still playing in some of these games, even in the Premier League. They're, they're still there. They're still playing. I just don't understand why they're not playing them in every game. Um, but we're nearly all caught up here and they still don't have a Champions League win under their belt. They have that one final which they they lost. Um, again, semi-final beaten by Bayern Munich. They do go into the Club World Championship and they lose that one to City in their semis. Uh, and now we're up to the modern day where they don't even have the best players anymore. And you can see they lose a Europa League final without any of their Gibraltarian players left. If you look here, you can see no more Gibraltarian players, but they do have a very strong squad. Uh, a lot of very good players in there that they brought in because they are now a big club. Uh, having had such a long period of success and so many good players you can see all their icons there that they've had but they're in a Adam Lakeland Stadium their former manager who took them from non-league football to where they are now if we have a look I mean look at those managers they had he was sacked sacked after 12 years and all those trophies 19 cup wins six league titles gets them to the Premier League and then he gets sacked for for I assume not playing the best players possible uh, Nagelsmann comes in gets a couple uh, Pep sacked after 124 days. That's not very good. Um, and then Nico Kovac has been the latest manager to come in. He's done an exceptional job. Been there for nine years now. Uh, but really interesting that they weren't quite able to make it. Now, if we have a look at the Premier League table over this period, uh, I think 26 27 when they finished second. Second again by four goals. 
a 79 point finish at the top. That is brutal to come second. And then they drop down to ninth, eighth, eighth. They do get back up into the Champions League places and then they fall down to fifth, falling out again up to third, but a long way off the title. And they do win a Premier League title by two points. That is reassuring. I was genuinely worried that they weren't going to win one, but they have managed to do it by two points in the 34-35 season. Back down to second, second, and then champions once more again by 10 points. Uh, and they have a little run here of swapping the title with City. The most recent season without any of their key players, they still managed to finish fourth. Only nine points off Newcastle who win the title. A lot of change in the Premier League over this time. Um, but they have managed to win some titles um, despite not playing their best players all the time. Uh, so that is reassuring to see, um, but never won the Champions League. That one runners-up medal, uh, which is really surprising. I think when I did the, the billionaire experiment, they did end up winning the Champions League. So it's amazing that the best possible team have not won the Champions League. Um, that's a, a really strange one. But if we have a look at um, some of these best players who are now at Real Madrid... Um, you can see here they all are. They've all joined. They're all not for sale. They're all big players at Real Madrid. 325k a week. Uh, joined as a free agent. And you can see they are playing their best players. But look at that. He didn't even play some seasons. He'd get 13 games mostly at cup competitions. He had his international games as well. But it must be a squad registration thing. But if it's a squad registration thing, why is he getting five games? Uh, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. All these big guns just not being played they were well i don't even think they need to be registered because they're homegrown players so it must have just been the case that because they're leaving the club um that that's that so if we if we just have a look here at the the schedule for them i don't have the league loaded up at the moment but you can see they do eventually all these players do eventually win a champions league title because they're all out there look all of them out playing in that champions league final for the first time and obviously they go and win the title in the end but um, just a bit of a strange one that that they haven't been played over that time. I mean, I can do this again and maybe release them, see if they play. But yeah, Gareth Southgate in charge of Gibraltar. Got to love that. But let's just have a look at how they did on the international stage. You can see typical Gibraltar at this stage. And then suddenly it turns to green. Three goals uh, in that one. You can see that they're, they're just not playing in these games. Even the tool draw here. Are they playing there? No, they're not playing in that one. But suddenly they start to win. 2023, you can see, um, other than that draw with Ukraine, they're winning every single match. And then in the European Championships, 4-0 over Croatia, 3-0 over Ukraine, 3-0 over Italy. And then they lose 3-2 to France. France were a good team, uh, but they shouldn't be losing to France. World Cup qualifiers have got this perfect record. They get into the World Cup, and you can see 9-0 over Canada. Mark Beck getting a hat-trick in that one. Uh, Marley being 6-0. England smashed 3-1. That would be a nice one for them. 5-0 revenge over France in the World Cup semi-final. And in the final, it takes a penalty shootout against Brazil. What a way for Gibraltar to win the World Cup. Um, they lose the International League, though, to Germany on penalties. So no penalty success there. But then European Championship comes up. They're already world champions. They beat France. They beat Germany 3-0 in their semis. And then in the final, they smash England 4-0 to take a European title to add to their World Cup. And then they, I would imagine, become the first team ever to hold the World, European and International League trophies at the same time with a 3-2 win over Spain. The next World Cup, though, England get some revenge. England win the World Cup. Jude Bellingham with the goal uh, as they beat Gibraltar and get some revenge. They're England world champions. Gibraltar runners-up. Then they get an International League trophy as well uh, they do win another european championship 4-0 against yeah. france another international league but then they lose in the semi-finals on penalties so their world cup runs not actually going all that well there another defeat um after that england final not brilliant they are winning that international league they win a third i think european championship there 5-0 Another international league. And then in the World Cup, they go out on penalties. They've still got all their best players, but they go out on penalties to Serbia in the second round. Another international league. And then it starts to fall a bit apart a little bit around this time, 2040, because their best players are retiring at this point. They still make it to the final, but they lose on penalties in that one. You can see none of these 
penalty scorers actually are Gibraltar players. So this is a reputation of Gibraltar keeping them up. And they do make it to another World Cup, but by this time they are drawing with Jamaica and losing to the Congo. So uh, all of their best players have retired at this point and they don't make it uh, any further than that. If we have a look at the World Golden Ball as well, uh, you can see they don't even win this at any point. Nobody has won a World Golden Ball until Mark Bett wins it with Real Madrid. Footballer of the Year, Mark Bett does win it with Farsley one year uh, before it's then... Uh, he then goes and wins it with Real Madrid. But there is something wrong with how the game is playing this stuff uh, that these players aren't making it there. You can see the last team of the year, you do end up with a bunch of them uh, in there. And if we look at previous years, do we have Farsley players in there? We do have a couple in there. Um, three players make the full list, including the subs bench. Uh, one of them, though, is not one of the Gibraltarian wonder kids. Well, a few of the three of them aren't. That's a weird thing. Um, I mean, this is extremely odd, the way this is all played out. If we go back to the very early years, obviously they aren't in a high enough reputation league to do this. Bro does get in there in the 26th season, but then they just fall out after that. Um, maybe what a year getting in there. I mean, it's just weird the way that that's played out. It really, really is. Uh, if we just go back to Gibraltar uh, and take a quick look at their competition history, you can see that one world championship, one runner-up, one third place, and then three European titles, six international league titles. They have won the lot, especially with that Champions League at Real Madrid in their final season, but this did not play out the way I expected it to. Hopefully one of you guys can let me know what's gone on down below. Maybe I can correct it the next time I do this experiment. Uh, to make sure they are all playing every game. I mean, it makes it more predictable if they're playing every game because they're going to win every single game and win every single trophy forever. Um, so this was certainly more interesting than unexpected. But do let me know down in the comments if you have theories as to why this happened. Uh, make sure to drop a like as well and subscribe to the channel if you're new. But until next time, see ya.